everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new tutorial showcasing some birch press dyes and also some distress oxide inking techniques. I love using oxide inks and any inks in general, including watercolors and other mediums. Now the fun thing with oxide inks or any other types of backgrounds that you make, you can use these to do some die cutting. So I'm going to talk about first the distress ink to oxide techniques that I've been using here on these backgrounds and then we'll get into how I turn them into cards. What you're seeing me do right now is I'm taking the oxide inks and smushing them across my paper to get a textured coverage of that ink onto my watercolor paper and I'm also using a textured watercolor paper from Strathmore just to get a really cool textured design. When you apply the oxide inks like this onto your paper and then add water with a paintbrush, you get a really cool painted stroke effect. I'm going to be using the Butterfly Garden plates A, B, and C. You can get these as a set to cut out these beautiful backgrounds that I have now in a light, a medium, and a darker tone. I'm going to start with plate A and cut the lightest panel from that die cutting cover plate. This butterfly garden set works together with these three different layers and that creates a dimensional layered die cut design. Now you can do this with just plain colors of cardstock, but I wanted to show you this technique to give you a little bit of a different look. Maybe you don't have lots of different colors of cardstock or you just want something totally different like I did here. By creating your own backgrounds, you can then get a totally new look and custom color with these beautiful dies. Here I've cut all three layers. The purple layer is cut with plate C, the pink layer is cut with plate B, and of course the lightest color on top is cut with A. And as these layer together, you get that really cool dimensional effect. I layered those three pieces with some liquid glue onto a purple card base, which is slightly darker than the purple that I used in the oxide ink colors. Now I'm going to add in some embellishments using some pretty pink posh gems and I'm going to add these into just some of the circle areas that are created in this design. You could skip the embellishing but I like having these little gems here and there throughout the pattern. I used one of Birch Press's new Sugar Script Thanks dies and this is the bigger one with the outline. There's also a smaller version of this without the outline. I used a sentiment from a Simon Says Stamp sentiment set and heat embossed that with the oxide inks because the oxide inks stay wet a little bit longer that allows you to add some embossing powder, in this case clear embossing powder, over top of that stamping and you get a beautiful embossed effect. I layered those two sentiments onto my background and that finished up this card which is absolutely beautiful, made possible by that beautiful butterfly garden background die set. So how about some other techniques using the oxide inks and these beautiful birch press dyes. Here I'm taking those ink pads, two different colors, and I'm going to just smush different areas of color onto some Canson XL watercolor paper. As I'm blending these two colors together, I'm making sure to clean my brush so that way I get a slight difference in color tone. I don't want them to be one solid color. I do want a little bit of variation here. I'm working on freezer paper, so don't wipe up that ink. You can reactivate it with just a little bit of water and start laying another sheet of paper into that ink. And you get a beautiful wash effect, which I used on the background of this card that I'm creating that I've done the oxide inking on. So I cut these beautiful sparkler butterflies. This is a three layer set. So you've got layer A, which is the most detailed. In the middle, we have layer B. And then the top butterfly on the right there is the layer C. And I cut all three of those from that first panel that I had created using the oxide inks. After getting all the little negative pieces out with my Spellbinders tool in one, I'm going to use some liquid glue and just add some adhesive in the centermost area of each of these butterflies. That's going to allow me to layer these together, but there's only glue holding the butterflies together in the center. That's letting the wings of the butterflies have a bit of dimension and that creates a more lifelike appearance. Now you can also layer these flat together which I did do on another card and you can see that at the end of this video or over on my blog. But I really loved the look of the dimensional butterfly. And so just by having that liquid glue and just puffing up the edges of the butterfly, that's all you need to give this butterfly a little bit of lift and beauty. Now this dimensional butterfly looks awesome, but I'm gonna step it up just a little bit by taking the Morning Garden Memory Box die set. 
This beautiful die set has some nice antennas that are the perfect size to work with these birch press butterflies. So I'm going to layer one of those antennas into the center of the butterfly. Now that scrap that I had cut the larger butterflies from, I'm going to use one of the corners of it to die cut these little teeny tiny butterflies also from memory box. And I'll use these on my card. Here's a look at the Smile Sugar Script Sentiment die, which is also from Birch Press and brand new. I'm going to pair it with a sentiment from Simon's Stamp, and both of these sentiments are going to sit on top of that watercolored wash that I created using the leftover ink from my butterflies. So you can see by using the oxiding, you can get a full card with those beautiful backgrounds that we created just by doing some die cutting. I'm layering those Sugar Script Smile dies together to create a dimensional sentiment. So I cut it out four times and adhered that onto the card. Memory Box also has some brand new swirly cloud dies, which I'm going to adhere down onto my card using some liquid glue. For the butterfly, I put just a couple dots of liquid glue into the center. And on the ends of the butterfly's wings, I'm going to add just a little bit of foam tape. When I lay this down onto my card then, that's going to allow the butterfly to again have that beautiful lift and dimension. You can keep the foam tape off to make it a little bit easier to mail, but I love foam tape and dimension, so I went ahead and added that foam tape onto the ends of the wings just to help with the lift. These memory box dies create stunning layering effects. You can see where I also added those cute tiny little butterflies to help pull the whole scene together. Now, we also can create some other different effects using oxide inks and creating bits for different backgrounds. So I'm going to show you a couple more backgrounds that I created using the oxide inks because I was having a lot of fun with this. So I started off by smushing the ink onto freezer paper and taking a piece of watercolor paper. This is again Canson watercolor paper. And I'm going to smush that ink to get a beautiful, vibrant effect. Now, the more ink you smush on here, of course, the more covered your cardstock is going to be, but it's also going to give some textured areas. Don't get rid of that ink. You can keep reusing it until there's pretty much nothing left of it. Here I'm creating three different layers, which I can use them with the layering die sets. So that first panel would be the dark layer. This panel that I had just created was the middle. And then this really light wash from all that leftover ink, I just reactivated it with a little bit of water. That's creating a pretty wash that will be the top layer. Now you could reverse these and have the darkest on top, whatever floats your boat. Here I'm doing some more of that ink swiping across the paper, but instead of using a paintbrush, this time I'm going to use the spray bottle. That's not moving all of the color around as much. It's not creating any of those streaks. So you're getting a more textured effect when you add the water just by a spray bottle instead of brushing it around with a paintbrush. I'm doing that again with a different color of oxide ink, and I can use these then together to create a really cool layered background with those birch press dyes. I use the yellow, the coral, and also this panel that I'm creating right now to create another layered die cut design, which I didn't get to finish in time for this video, but I'm hoping I'll be able to post that soon. Here's one that I did using three different colors together to create an ombre effect. What I did with this one was that I die cut another one of those same butterflies that we had just done in the video. I'm going to use this panel to create a really cool background that has a lot of variation to it. So you don't technically need to have three completely different colors of cardstock to, or in this case backgrounds, to create these layering effects. You can use very similar colors and you'll still get a really beautiful and dimensional design. Before I wiped up that freezer paper that I'm working on, I did make sure I picked up all of that leftover ink to get a really fun textured background, which both of these pieces were used on this card here. This has a lot of beautiful layers and variations of color. And there you can see that beautiful background that we created with all that leftover ink. Here's one more final card that I did using a very similar technique that I did for the first card. Except this time I used some green oxide inks and the Dazzler layering die. And this creates a very elegant and beautiful birthday card. I hope that all of these ideas and techniques that I've shared within this video have inspired you to use the oxide inks to create fun backgrounds, but also give you some ideas for using these new Birch Press Designs dies. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me today. I hope I will see you again very soon with more inspiration. And until then, have a great day. Bye!